Okay, today, guys, I want to look at the absolute state of our slash entitled parents uh, in 2021, the year of our Lord and Savior. Like, I haven't visited this subreddit in forever. I was kind of into it at the beginning of, like, 2019, I think. And then the stories just started seeming so fake all the time and I want to check up on it I want to see if it's maybe it's improved maybe I don't know but the, this it was the top post of this month entitled mom confronts me for have the audacity to buy our house when her son wanted it so just right off the bat there's like a house involved here let's just let's just see what's going on brief backstory back in March I 25 female and my partner 27 male bought a house Big deal for us, and we're so glad we managed to pull this off, especially right before the pandemic got bad. It's a livable fixer-upper, and the lady that lived there bought it in 67 and was the only owner before us, and she made no updates in this time, lol. It keeps us busy, and that's worked out really well being home so often. Now to the event with EM. EM is short for Entitled Mother, by the way. In May, my big project was pulling out some nasty bushes that had taken over a huge chunk of the front side yard. It was hot. I was sweaty. I'm digging out roots and throwing branches. As I'm right up front and making a pretty drastic change to the yard, people notice. Most neighbors stop by, say a quick hello from the car, and drive away. But not EM. EM pulls up in a shiny black Suburban from the opposite side of the road, parks the wrong way, and rolls down her window. I'd say she's in her 50s to 60s. Gray slash white bob cut hair. I stand up and pause my music. The following conversation isn't exact, but pretty close as this conversation was just so entitled. EM, hey, did you buy this house? Me, yup, just moved in last month. Do you know the family? Um that sold it? Not really. We just got lucky and they chose us, I guess. Ha ha. Trying to be nice, but kind of off-put, she's asked none of the typical neighbor questions. We made a great offer. Yeah, my son really wanted this house. He grew up in this neighborhood, you know. Oh, darn. Yeah, houses move fast right now. He spent his whole life in this area. He really deserved to stay in the neighborhood, you know. Uh, yeah, that's too bad. Major WTF feelings now. How much did you offer? Me, not about to tell her the details. Over asking price. We were proactive, haha. Well, my son really wanted that house. Me, feeling quite awkward with this whole situation and just looking to shoo this lady along. Yeah, well, I'm sure more houses will go up for sale around here. Well, that doesn't help him now, does it? He had his heart set on that house. I just exaggeratingly shrug and decide to resume my root cutting to try and give her the message. She doesn't leave. I'm wondering if I should go inside or something. She just keeps looking at me expecting me to say something. I keep cutting out a root. Is it just you or did your family help you get it? Me getting pretty short in tone, my partner and I bought it together. My grandkids would have loved the yard. A loved yard makes a house a home, you know. Me not looking up. Well, my dogs will love it, especially once I'm done. Seriously? I just scoff, pull my root out, and throw it on the pile. I feel her eyes watching me. Me, really ready to be done. Well, have a good day. Then, with a last glare and an ugh, she speeds off, leaving a quite annoyed and bewildered me in the dirty glory, mulling over what the heck just happened. Did this freaking lady just try to guilt trip me because we bought a house that her son wanted? Indeed, apparently. What the frick? Definitely the most unwelcoming interaction I've had since we moved in, and I have not seen her since. Edit. Thank you for all the retention this has received. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I was going into this wanting to hate this story and wanting it to be fake as hell. This is an example of a very much not bad entitled parent story in my opinion. Like, it works for me. I think, yeah, like, there's a chance that it could be a fake story, but honestly, at the same time, I could totally see something like this happening. I used to have a neighbor, and my mom had to put in, like, a new section of fence, because one of our sections of fence got fucked up in a, in a storm, and the section of fence was, like, brand new looking wood, because that's just what wood looks like, and the rest of our fence had been worn down by, like, rain and weather over the years, and our next-door neighbor 
literally thought that we put up that new section of fence out of spite for her so that her view of like whatever was in her backyard and stuff would be worse just because we disliked her like people do weird stuff like this and uh if this is a true story the mother is yes extremely entitled not a great person so good on you entitled parents you're not that's not as bad as i thought it would be let's check out another story and see if maybe that one is more emblematic of what this subreddit was like the last time i checked it out okay so i was trying to go through like the top posts of this month just by upvotes to see what the most popular stuff on r slash entitled parents is currently but the second top post of this month involved like an actually abusive parent and i just didn't want to get near that because the vibe of this video is a little bit more lighthearted. So here's the third top post of this month. Give my kid your PS5 or you've ruined his Christmas. Now this is the entitled parents I remember from 2019. Hi guys, I initially posted this on r slash am I the a-hole, but a lot of people said they thought you might like this. So the other day I, 30 year old male, got lucky and managed to get a hold of a PS5, which are like gold dust in the UK at the moment. Work has been ridiculous this year, and my PS4 broke a few months back, so to say I'm hyped for it and some holiday downtime is an understatement. The console finally arrived the other day and was left with my neighbor. I knocked on the door, thanked them for taking the parcel, and exchanged some pleasantries when she casually asked if it was anything nice. I told her it was a PS5, and we had the usual small talk, and I went back inside, thinking nothing of it. Later we had a knock on the door from her husband, 38-ish, and he said that his wife had mentioned I'd gotten a PS5 and they wanted one for their 7 year old son. It was all his son wanted this year, and it's been a tough year for his son as he's not been able to see his friends much, so I would consider selling it to them for what I bought it for. I said I understood, but I didn't really want to sell it as I was really looking forward to playing it. That's when things got a bit weird. He huffed a little and said Christmas should be about kids and I should really consider how hard it's been for them and offered me an extra 50 pounds. I said I wouldn't be selling it for any price, I wasn't looking to make money on it, I just really wanted to play it. He left, but he said he hoped I'd reconsider as you and I are a bit too old for video games anyway and walked off. End of story, I thought. The next day he comes over again, this time with his son. He said his son really wanted to see the PS5 he had heard about. The boy then said to me that that's what he really wanted for Christmas and hoped Santa would get him one. I replied that hopefully he would, but it's really busy for him this year so he might have to wait a little longer for it. But if not, I'm sure he'd get something nice instead. Another day passes and my fiance said they had posted something weird on social media about, there's a neighborhood group, how they had thought that 2020 would have made people less selfish and more giving, but they were disappointed in their neighborhood which had forgotten community spirit, and how people should be more thoughtful towards the children in the street given how much they've all suffered this year. Off the back of it, my fiance asked if I should sell them the console and just to keep the peace. No, why? What? Later that day, they came around again to tell me that I had promised their son he'd be getting a PS5 for Christmas, and now it would be ruined if he didn't get one. She said that I am an adult and should be thinking of kids at Christmas, not acting like one playing video games, and that I was being unbelievably selfish and cruel. He added that he didn't know how he could enjoy Christmas knowing that we were horrible people that had ruined a seven-year-old's Christmas. Now, I've also heard from some people on the street that they've been talking shit about us to people, though most neighbors are just staying out of it, but we've definitely been getting some daggers from the Muns Who Lunch crew. We live in a super nice neighborhood, but it's firmly middle class. Lots of private school kids called Hattie and Sebastian, etc. We're definitely the youngest on the street and weird childless couple, which I don't think PS5 gate is helping with. My fiance just wants to sell it to them to end it, but I'm still trying to hold firm. Honestly, I feel like I'm losing my mind at this point. Alright, so let me know what you guys think about this one, because this one's much more uh, leaning towards possibly fake, in my opinion. I do think it's a much better written story than what I remember reading a lot at the beginning of 2019 on Entitled Parents. I know that the moderators there, like, are very sensitive about allowing fake stories, so maybe that's why some stuff has gotten more plausible. If this is real, obviously it's absolutely insane. Like, this makes no sense. You can't force somebody to sell you something because Christmas is about children. That's just silly. Like, 
if I were that guy, I would have been like, hey, the, you can probably get a PS4 like anywhere right now. Just get him a PS4, get him a few games, it'll cost you way less than a PS5, and there's like pretty much no big PS5 exclusive games out right now. I mean, maybe there are, I, I, don't, I don't know. But he's a freaking seven-year-old kid. What sort of standards could, for video games could he have yet? Like, at seven, I was cool with like playing Pong or Centipede or the freaking, uh, you know, the little pinball game on your desk desktop like that's just uh, i don't know so let me know what you think about this like revisiting subreddits kind of seeing what's up with them i actually just did a video on r slash dank memes over on q2 it's called dank or stank it's like a because i just i like to look at the subreddits i'm not a huge fan of reddit i think that it's okay there's a lot of decent places to find content over there but a lot of the stuff is just straight up trash i mean that's kind of the nature of having so many different subreddits about different things and different communities controlling what's posted in those spaces so let me know what you think if you want to see more of that i'll leave the link to the r slash dank memes uh, video in the comments and the description um i'd like to give a major shout out to swift wolf coyote loki 411 kennedy de silvis mac in paradise caleb grills ghost spoons roller geeks james barnoski miss inked tay p hyper ninja child jared d regrettable stitches allison b for jared connor g cryptid fennec kaya bay tasha k and catco as well as everyone else you see on your screen a lot of these people i do not believe are active channel members anymore but even if they're not paying they, they were paying for a little Little bit for content like one once every freaking two weeks to a month so they deserve to have their name shouted out forever um anyway i hope you guys are doing super well skating on to the best of your abilities drinking a sufficient amount of water and i'll see you very soon take it easy keep it cheesy